Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I am joined today by Corporal Jason Farr, who is with the San Francisco, South San Francisco Police Department, Community Relations Corporal. Jason, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, so just tell us a little bit about what your life is like as a Community Relations Officer Corporal um, within the South San Francisco Police Department. I do quite a few things. I take care of neighborhood disputes or neighbor disputes. I facilitate the Citizens Academy, which we hold once a year. And then I coordinate some neighborhood watches, other programs that we run. So it's all the community uh, related stuff goes through me. Right, you know, it's interesting if we kind of looked back in time with regard to how we keep our community safe and look at public safety and specifically police departments. Um, this idea of community relations and community policing um, has really sort of been this evolution of we need to we need to solve crime and we need to prevent crime, but we also want to get to know our communities and what their needs are and how do we prevent it. And therefore, a lot of community policing officers and community relations kinds of things to say, we're here and let's work together. Absolutely, that's exactly what my unit's for. We try to get out there in the community, introduce ourselves, get them involved in their community. Right. They know who, who knows their community better than the citizens who are living in it. So we try to get them in as, as involved as possible, so. So, which is a great segue, and we, you and I didn't even practice this. Nope. <laughs> which is a great segue to talk about. Um, you've noticed that there's a large dog walking population out there, and these folks do it on a regular basis. They're always out there um, at certain times um, of all day and night, and you wanna utilize them to sort of notice what's going on. Absolutely, we were trying to find a new program to implement to get people in their, our community involved. And I was driving around town, I always see people, same people out there walking their dogs or just walking in general for their daily walk. So then I started doing some research and then I saw this program and then I thought it might be useful for us because we have so many people out at all times of the day. And I'm, so far it's been a pretty good success. Right, and so it's, it's kind of your own eyes and ears into the community. Um, you, you're only so many in numbers and in force, um, but yet your community is always out there walking their dogs rain or shine, and our climate's pretty good, so I imagine mm -hmm. everybody's out there pretty much. So, But you also um, bring a training element to all of this, so you can kind of help the community understand what to be looking for um, and what's relevant and how to sort of remember it and who to report to, so tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, I put on like 45 minute training um, sessions. We just go over some simple, topics and suggestions on how to report suspicious activity. We wanna emphasize that there's no physical detainment on their part. Well, all we want them to do is to observe and then just call us immediately so we can go out there and investigate the situation. They know what looks suspicious in their neighborhoods. They're right. there every day. They know what cars are in their neighborhood, who lives where. So they can, it's kind of common sense to point out Right, What's not and, right. and to relieve anybody in the community that it's not a big brother approach right. to sort of all of this, but it is about noticing what's happening in your community because that, those are statistically things that police departments know will help um, resolve crime or even prevent them um, by knowing what's different. Right, exactly. And not and not be sort of fearful of it or um, afraid of it. So you're gonna you're just implementing this program now. We started it back in late September, mm -hmm. and then uh, we did a couple of training sessions over the beginning of the winter that went well, we got, they were well attended. And we have another one coming up February 16th, the police department. And uh, so far I've gotten nothing but good feedback from it and everybody seems to enjoy the training. So um, people physically attend the training and, and you, you obviously talk about it and then um, they're out sort of out and about and doing their normal business. If someone can't make a training, do you have something online or something to visit on the web? I just try to space out the trainings and make them different days. And so I'll do them peri periodically and try and accommodate as many people as possible. Information's better um, face to face yes. and in person so people can ask questions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and see. So um, at some point in time, you're gonna gather some data and be able to give some feedback back to the community that will say, look, with you know, X amount of people trained and, and out in the community, we feel that it has helped in the reduction of crime or helped in the solution of crime. Um, 
so I, I imagine that that's going to be something that you'll look for. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking for. We'll probably towards the end of the next or early next year after this year's stats have gone through, we'll definitely be something to look at and see if this program has helped in deterring and or solving criminal activity. Right. And I know it's just one program with, within what you do in your community. You have um, your community CERT programs. What are some of the other things that you're doing to ensure that people are aware? Well, we have three different uh, Citizens Academy, the Spanish speaking, uh, the regular Citizens Academy, and the Youth Academy that we do once of each of those a year. So there's three of them throughout the year. Uh, I'd go and speak at a lot of neighborhood watch programs. A lot of, some neighborhoods will contact me, I'll just go out and speak to them. Or uh, certain citizens will just gather a group of neighbors together and they'll have, ask me to come down and speak about crime trends or kind of safety concerns that they have. And it's just, those are a few of the uh, Many programs. programs. Yeah, we right. do a lot. You know, I think that one of the things that we can, uh, hopefully our viewers today will be educated on is, you don't always necessarily think to call your police department to say, hey, what are the things that we can be doing? We, we sort of think you've got the badge and you've got the gun and you've got special Superman powered training, um, but yet we can get involved and we can be doing things that aid you and your work in the community. And so you encourage people to call. We, I try and reiterate that throughout the training, this is what you guys pay us for. We, you know it doesn't look right. If, right. It, if you don't think it looks right, it probably isn't. So just give us a call, we'll come out, check it out. The worst thing that can happen is we get there and it's nothing, so. We, I try to encourage as many people to call us when they think something is amiss. Right. So. Yeah. And um, and again, and to be involved in the programs because they can certainly get involved in the CERT program. I did it uh, in Redwood City and it was one of the greatest experiences just learning about all the different factions from public safety and beyond within the community. It made me a better educated person as to what to do in an emergency, et cetera, and beyond. So do you know how many people have sort of gone through your CERT programs? Well, so I'm not, we're not involved with CERT. CERT's oh. a fire department. Oh, okay. So our dog walker watch, there's been a little bit over 50. Um, there's been numerous in our Citizens Academies. Citizens uh, Academy, so yes. So Citizens Academy kind of gives people a taste of what we do as a police department in our everyday, our different assignments, and right. kind of just different police activities. So we encourage people to sign up for that. but. Uh, yeah, Jason, I'm sorry. I meant That's to okay. say Citizens Academy. And I, and I think to, in today's climate, even more important for people to learn about what the citizens, or to involve themselves in the Citizens Academy, because we really need to know that you are out there building this sense of community and want to be involved in the community. And we, you just want us to tell you how and, yeah, and what's out there. We want to educate as many people as possible and right. we want to be as transparent and as possible. Right. Let the public know what we're doing, how we kind of do things and just make sure that they know that we're out there trying to work for them. Right. So I want to thank you so very much for, for being me. on the program and not only um, speaking to us dog walkers because I'm, I'm out there walking my dog <laughs> twice a day um, and letting us know what we can do to be more involved in our community, but also letting us know about your life and what you do as a community officer and community relations within the South San Francisco Police Department. So thanks. Thank you. All right, and we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.